So this is a video for working with the star rhythm exercises, which I highly encourage all musicians to do. Um, I used to do these on the subway train, and they're wonderful at keeping people who you don't want to be around away. So uh, they also have the side effect of teaching you how to read rhythms, which is very helpful for all musicians, and to conceptualize rhythms. So we're going to start today with chapter 2, number 16 and 17. 16 is very simple, and it's a very good way to understand the two ways that I'm going to suggest you do this. So the two ways are with tease and toss and with counting through. So for tease and toss, you're going to say ta for all the quarter notes or half notes and t for the eighth notes. So the first line of number 16 would be ta, t, t, ta, t, t, ta, 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 t, t, ta. Now notice when you're doing this with either way, your hand is the beat. It's not the rhythm. I call it the relentless hand of time. And that, nothing can stop the relentless hand of time. No matter how you try, it just beats on and on. Whereas the rhythm is what you're saying. Okay? So that was the first line. Now I'm going to do, <coughs> excuse me, the first line of number 17. Ta, t, 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 ta, ta. Things are pretty simple in the first line of 17 because either you have a quarter note rest which takes the whole beat, you just say nothing, or you have an eighth note rest which comes after the note and it really doesn't matter because it's not on the beat. So the second measure of 17 is T, T. The last measure of that line is Ta, Ta. It's almost the same thing. Just saying T because it's eighth notes the first time, keeping it short. And Ta goes through the whole beat. Okay, the problem comes in beginning in the second line where you have an eighth note rest on the beat. So there, if you take the last two measures of the second line, it's T, T, Ta, T, Ta. So what happened there is I had the beat, the rest was there, so I didn't say anything, but before the next tap, there's a note. So you have to get that in right in the middle. And if you could think, you could think of it as if there's a little shelf above your hand as you're beating the time, the, the notes that are in between are up here. Okay, so last two measures again would be T, T, Ta, T, Ta. Now I'm going to give you the next line as well. I'm going to start there and give you the next line. But the way to learn these is definitely not to copy what is here on the video. The video is just so that you can understand how to do it, and then you want to do it on your own. Okay? So, this is the last two measures of the second line. T, T, Ta, T, Ta, T, 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 Ta, Ta, T, 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 Okay? All right, so that's the T's and Ta's. Not too difficult. Now we're going to go to the second way that I want you to do it. Slightly more complex but also not so difficult once you master it. You're going to count through. So, the first line of 16. What's going to happen is you're going to say, the, there are two beats in all these measures. You're never going to say three, you're never going to say four. Um, but sometimes, like the third measure of 16, you have one, two. You have two beats, two notes. Just say one, two. But sometimes there's a note in between the taps, just like we were talking about before, where you're hitting that little shelf. So then you have an ant. So the first line of 16 would be one, two, and one, 
two and one, two, one, two, one and two. Okay. Sixteen once again is relatively straightforward. When you get to seventeen, the only in, in 16, you always had 1 and 2 in every measure. But you don't have the number if when you're hitting, at that precise moment, there's a rest. So, for example, the fourth line of 17 would be 1. You don't say anything for 2 because there's a rest over it. Okay? If I went on to the next measure, it would be 1. One, two. The two for that measure, gone. Doesn't exist. The beat is there, but you didn't have anything to do on that beat. Okay. Now we're doing the whole line of of the of the first line of seventeen. One, two, and one, two, one and two, one, one, two. Now notice, as I mentioned. The second measure of 17 and the last measure of the first line, the fifth measure, almost the same. In the second measure, it's one, two. In the fifth measure, one, two. So you could, you know, do something the way you say it. You could make the, the expression of one, two shorter for the eighth notes, but it's almost the same thing. Okay? Now, when we get to the second line, we have that situation we talked about where there's a um, rest over the tap, but there's another note before the next tap. So the last two measures of the second line would be one and two and two. Because the one, there was a rest over it, you didn't say that one. But the and, there was something you had to do. So one and two, and two. And again, you say that and where you hit that little shelf, that imaginary shelf in between. Okay, now I'm going to give you, going from the se second to last measure of the second line, and I'll play, and I'll do the third line. Okay, so one and two and two, and two, and one, two, one, and one, two, and one, and two, and. So there you have it. Okay, next time we'll start talking about 16th notes. Until then, happy practicing. It's an amazing book of great value. Rhythmic Training by Robert Starr. Buy it at your lo local bookstore or online. Um, Star, a fine composer from Brooklyn, and we appreciate his work.